So this episode is a preview of my course where I show you how to build a complete Rails application using Tailwind, Hotwire, and the latest version of Rails. I'll teach you how to build a Twitter clone from start to finish and walk you through all the major features that you need. So after the video, if you like this content, head down to the description and you'll find a link where you can pre-order and save a lot of money on the course. Thanks. So we're gonna start this project off just by cloning my Rapid Ruby starter project. So it has some basic things set up. So it's got Tailwind and Hotwire set up. Um, there's user authentication as well. Um, and if you want to see in more depth how I start my Rails projects, um, you can click the link up above um, and have a mini series on all of the things I add to a Rails project to get started. So I'm just gonna come down here and I've got some commands of my own for how I clone these and how I start a new sample project. So we're just gonna copy all of this across and go into VS Code and we'll just paste this in. So um, the main thing we need to do here is, is change the project name. So I'm just gonna change this to Twitter. And then if I open up a terminal we should be able to go into my YouTube projects folder and then copy this as Twitter and then we'll CD into Twitter and open that up using Visual Studio Code and then we can run bundle install and then we'll run these commands just to uh, create a git repository for it. So we'll remove the current project. We'll create a new project on GitHub. And then we'll push up this code so far. Then the next thing we'll do is create our Rails database. And that's everything we need there. So we can close that down. So now we have that set up, we can run our bin dev command and that'll spin up our real server so we can go to localhost 3000 and you can see here we've got a bunch of migrations to run. So the first thing we're going to do is just go into these migrations so we can go migrate and we can see we've got a user table and what we're going to want here is a username. So we need to add that to our form because we want uh, all users to have a username for our Twitter clone. So we'll save this and then close our Rails server again, run these migrations. And we'll just run those in our test environment as well. And then if we run bin dev again, we should now be able to load up our app and we can. So um, this is gonna be broken at the moment because when we go to sign up, we don't have a username field in place. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that to our form. So we can go to our app controllers, registrations controller, and we can scroll down to our params here and we can add in a username. And then we can go across to our view and we'll say registrations new. And this is our form and we can come down here and copy email. And then we'll just call this username. And if we just make this a text field and we can get rid of this autocomplete. And if we reload the page now, we have username. So um, next up, we'll go to our user.rb model and we'll make sure that we say validates username uh, with presence true as well and hit save there. And then the only other thing that we want to do with our username is just make sure that it doesn't have any spaces or anything like that. So we will go ahead and create a validator for that. So we'll say app 
I'm gonna say new folder validators username underscore validator dot rb and I'm just gonna paste this in here. So um, we have a regular expression to validate our usernames and we want them to be alphanumeric and can only include hyphens or underscores. So we'll save this, go back to our user and then we can put username in its own line here. So we can say username presence true, username true. We'll just take it out here. And if we open up our tests, we can say um, expected to validate presence of username. And then we also want to go to our spec fixtures for users. And we want to make sure we've got usernames here too. So we want to say username Pete. And I'll say username Lazaro. I'll hit save and close. And then if we uh, run these tests, hopefully they are passing and they are. So I'm just going to go ahead here and sign up as myself. So I'll say Pete at rapidruby.com. I'm going to say my username is Pete and I'm going to put in a password and we'll hit sign up. And so we need my verify email address. So I'll copy this and we'll just paste it in here and we get thank you for verifying your email address and then um, that's us all signed up so now we can go ahead and create our tweet model so i'm going to say bin rails g model and we're going to say tweet and we're going to say that references a user and it has a body which is te of type text and I think that's all we're going to do right now. So we'll just generate this. And we'll go in here and we'll say body is null false because we don't want any empty tweets. And then we can go into our tweet model and it's associated spec file here. And we can say it is expected to validate presence of body and we can also say it is expected to belong to user and we'll save these and run these tests and as you can see we get pending migrations error so we'll run that and then rerun those specs again and we get one passing so it already has the belongs to user and what is feeling is the validation so we can say validates body presence true and then we can run those again and they're passing so we now have a tweet set up and it belongs to a user and we want to be able to create one of those so we'll now generate a controller and some views for our tweets so we'll say ben rails generate controller and we'll say it's the tweets controller and what we want is index action to list all the tweets out we want a show action to show an individual tweet a new action for creating a new one and let's just start with that so then we'll open up our rights file and we'll go down and we'll use this root here we'll say resources tweets and we'll just use all of those so we'll get rid of our lessons there as that's just an example and we'll also say our tweets index is our home page so if we see if that reload here um, we still got migration so we'll run those and then we get our tweets index here what we want to do here is basically pull in our tweet form at the top and allow you to post a tweet and just render that out so we'll just go ahead and do that now so I'll just close down all of these and we'll go into our uh, controllers and tweets controller and we'll just say index and we'll just grab all the tweets so we'll say tweets equals tweet dot all and we'll say order by created at descending to get the newest ones at the top and then if we go to our views and tweets index and then we can just say all tweets 
and then we'll just do render tweets and this will look for a partial here so if we reload and um, there's nothing there because there are no tweets yet but um, that will need a underscore tweet dot html dot erb file and that'll render the tweet out so we'll just put in here and say uh, render out the tweet dot body and hit save and now we just want to include our tweet form here so if we go into our tweets and we'll just say uh, underscore form dot html dot erb and then we can create a form so let's say uh, this is a form with and we can say form with tweet.new and then we'll want to just take the body here so we'll say uh, f.label body and we'll just give it a title of Actually, we'll not even use the label. We'll just use a placeholder. So we'll say f dot text area for body, and then we'll say placeholder is what do you want to say dot dot dot, and then hit save. And then we need a button. So we'll say f dot input uh, or f dot submit and we'll give it a label of tweet and now if we reload this uh, we haven't imported it yet so we'll go to our index here and just pull our form in at the top so we can say render tweets slash form and we'll hit save so now we get wrong number of arguments and that's because with form with we need to specify whether it's a model or a url um, so we need to go in here and then say model reload and now we get our tweet form and that should automatically be set up properly to go to our tweets action and it does and method is post as well so um, we can go to our controller then for tweets and we can say uh, create and what we're going to want here is to create a private method here that we can say tweet params and we'll say params don't require tweet because that's what the tweets are going to be they're going to be tweet and then body so we can say params dot require tweet and then dot permit we'll say body and then we can do in here we can grab our current user so we can say current dot user dot tweets which also doesn't exist yet and we'll go ahead and create that in a second we'll say dot new with our tweet params and then we'll just say this is tweet and then we can say if tweet.save we'll do one thing else we'll do another thing so these are yet to be determined I think what we'll do is redirect to uh, root path if it works and we'll maybe say like notice tweet posted something like that and if it fails maybe we'll just for now do a redirect to the root path and we'll say and alert and we'll say tweet field try again so if we save this now current user needs tweets so we'll open up user.rb and we need to add a validation here but we can first go in and add a test for that so we can say expect user to have many tweets and um, posts is something just out of this sample app so i'm just going to get rid of the test for that and we will run this now and it should feel the first time around uh, which it does no association called tweets then we can go in here we'll just change this one and we'll say has many tweets dependent destroy 
and if you're new to Rails, dependent destroy just basically means if you go in and delete this user from the database, it will also go through any dependencies and delete those too. So if we delete a user, all their tweets are going to be deleted as well. So we can come back, run these tests again, and they should all pass, and they do. And so that is where we get our tweets method from. So our current user now has this association, and we can now create new tweets through that. And our user method is going to be set on the tweet because we're using this scope. So we'll hit save here, and we can go in and post our first tweet. So I'm just going to say, hello world, and tweet. And we get tweet posted, and our tweet is now here. So now I can come through and say, whoa, this is cool, and tweet it. And we get both tweets now showing up here. So they're not wrapped in paragraphs or anything like that right now. So I maybe want to just do some really quick styling here where we'll throw them into a paragraph or maybe we will actually do simple format here because simple format is built into Rails and we'll convert line breaks in the text area and stuff. So if we do hello, hey, and then do a line break and then say world and tweet that, Reels will automatically put line breaks in between for us using simple format. So I think this is a good place to stop. Obviously we've um, barely scratched the surface here, but we at least have a form and we're posting some data. Um, in the next episode, we will look to style that up and make it work a little uh, nicer. So it's maybe not doing full page reloads when something is posted. Um, we can just insert the tweets in directly using Hotwire.